In this part of our InDesign project, we're going to take the opening page of our magazine and make it a little bit more exciting looking so that it looks a little bit more like this. So let's open up our document again. And what we're going to do first is bring in some sort of image to use in the background. So we need to locate our assets. And uh, I'm opening them up in X in view so I can see all of them. And this is an image that I found on the internet we're going to use as our background image. I do want to take a look at it real quick though because let me actually double click on it so I can see just that image. If I go up to image, resize, I want to see what the settings are. And I know when I downloaded this, the print size was set to 72 dots per inch. And that's something you definitely want to change. Now be aware that you need to click off the resample because you don't want to change the number of pixels in this image unless you really need to. And um, I'm going to set it to 150 dpi. And I would also do this for the other files that you're going to be using. I'm going to be using this um, Fibonacci sequence spiral. So if I take a look at the settings here with Shift S, you'll see I also changed this to 150 dpi. Now, if you don't have X in view, which I suggest you're getting anyway, um, you can use Photoshop, of course, because all we have to do is open up that image and go to Image, Image Size, and you see we have the exact same thing. We just have to turn off the resample, just like we have in X in view. So that's the image that we're going to be using um, as our symbols here. And we also might be using this image too, which I thought was kind of fun. So um, I've got a few images we're going to kind of throw in. Um, let's begin with this background image. One way to get it into my, my InDesign document is just to drag it in. Just click and drag the icon right into InDesign and it comes right in. Then click and it will come in at its native size. Now what I want to do is place it to where it's going to go. Now I'm not going to be too picky about stretching this particular image because it's just used as, as a background image. It doesn't have to look necessarily accurate and it can kind of look like it's a little bit off kilter, maybe taken from an angle anyway when it's stretched. So if I want to stretch, I start dragging out, but you'll notice that it treats the image and the um, frame as two separate parts. In fact, if you double click on the frame, you'll see that I get a red border around the image itself and it treats the image inside the frame as a completely separate object. So I'm going to undo that with two control Z's so I get back to the original. And sometimes what you want to do is hold down the control key and then click on your corners so that you adjust the outside and the inside, that is the outside frame and the inside content at the same time. Now in this case, I'm just going to drag this all the way down to the end of the corners. And you'll see that this is actually now in top of my text. So what I'd like to do is put this behind the text by right clicking, going to arrange, and sending it to the back. The problem with this is that I'd really like to be able to select my text, but I don't really want to select this image in the foreground or in the background at all. So here's where we definitely should use layers. Now, for this, all we have to do is create a new layer. And then let's go ahead and give that layer a name by double clicking on it. And we'll call it background. Now, with this layer, all I need to do is take the selected object. And it's indicated by the selected item, that blue item. Drag it up to the layer that I want it to be on. And then drag that underneath so it's at the right place. Now I just need to be aware of which layer I'm on when I'm working. And of course, I can lock the background layer if I don't want to be adding anything else to it. But for right now, we are going to add some other things. I'm going to begin by uh, the next thing I want to add is the um, PNG of the Fibonacci sequence. So I'll go to File, Place, and this is just an alternate way of doing it. So here is the Fibonacci sequence right there. So I can click and you'll see that it comes in at its native size, which is not great size, but you know, I can play with it a little bit. So I'm going to just scale it up a little bit. And this time I held down the control and the shift key together because I definitely don't want to stretch that because it looks awkward when it's stretched. But I can at least make it a little bit larger. Maybe move it over just a little bit. I'm going to actually have that line kind of go off the edge. All right. 
Now let's make sure that's on the background and it sure is. Now I can import a couple other images. Now I like the method of clicking and dragging because it allows me to select two images at the same time or even more and bring them all in. So I'm going to select these two books and click and drag them into the InDesign document over to the side and then just click and each document will come in at their native size. And they're both, they've both been set to 150 dpi. Now I also love InDesign for the fact that it automatically snaps different objects to each other, which is really, really excellent. So I can snap the decoding design to the other book here, then take the two of them and group them together. You group them with Control G. This way I can move both of them, whoops, I can move both of them as one group if that is, I click on it not on that thing in the middle. If I click on the thing in the middle, what it does is it edits the picture on the inside. So you got to be clever about that. You'll notice each time um, I hover over an image, it will actually allow me to click on that one image inside. It's, it's really kind of interesting the way it works. And it's just when you see it when you hover over the object just the right way. So there you can see I could move that. Anyway, I'm going to come back to this object, select the object, hold down the shift and the control key together and scale them down and these are going to go next to my text box here. Oops. Sometimes I need to click off of it. Oops. Click off of it and just on the right side. There we go. That looks better. Now um, I'm going to be putting this next to my text box, my text frame, so I'm going to actually expand my text frame just a little bit. But obviously we have some issues with our text, so we need to update that stuff too. So I'm going to go to my text, select a little bit of it, go to my swatches, and change the color. And I'm going to change it to white, and then I can go to the paragraph styles and update that style. By redefining that style, all the other text will turn white. Now, one of the things that I didn't mention before is that this text is pretty large, and it should really be kerned as well. So that's a good thing for us to do here, and I can do that by selecting all the text and using the Alt and Left and Right arrows to kern that text a little bit tighter, and then I can redefine that to make the other ones tighter as well. Whoops, I didn't mean to redefine it there. I really meant to redefine it here. There we go. Now come in and adjust each individual letter afterwards as well. And I would definitely suggest that you get up close to your work and even go to the preview mode so that you can see a better quality preview of how that text actually looks but you want your kerning to be pretty tight on your large text. Now um, we need to make the other items also white, so I can select those both at the same time, which is kind of nice. Select the text from Maggie, McNabb, and the other. Go to my swatches and apply them to white. But wait a second, what happened? This time, because I tried to select both, it selected just them as objects, not as text. So over in the on the left hand side, I didn't undo. Um, over on the left hand side, you have see the formatting effects container versus the formatting effects text. If I click on the text, then when I click on my my text color, it will change both. Now I can click off of them, click back on it, and then adjust the paragraph styles that need to be adjusted. Redefine that style, and redefine the first paragraph style as well. Whoops, because I've, I've got a lot selected here, I'm going to go inside the paragraph to the original text and redefine it from there. There we go. I do have some uh, style here that I really shouldn't have. There we go. That, that style should just be on the first sentence and something I did when I was playing around. Anyway, um, given the fact that we now know that the paragraph styles or the text styles is different than the container styles, we can actually do some really cool things with that. If I go back to my swatches, I'm going to apply a black fill to the box here. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I'd like for this box to be um, a different color and I'd like the text to be inside um, so that it is, uh, so just with one frame I can 
affect the background color and the text inside and it's really good it's really cool that you can do that with InDesign anyway the next thing that I want to do with this box is inset my text now we could come up to the text settings and try and do some of the stuff like insetting it here but this is a really bad idea because it changes our paragraph styles so I'm going to take that back out and instead I'm going to right click and go to the text frame options and here I can change the inset spacing to exactly what I want and this kind of is is going to be nice if I actually bring it in a little bit and now I can possibly go to um, my paragraph settings and it might be nice in this case especially to go ahead and allow it to have um, the justified columns and then also turn off that hyphenate which is a really bad idea to have usually so now that we've used those settings up there then we would have to come to our paragraph styles and actually redefine that style but notice that since I have a character style in a paragraph style I really need to go inside the paragraph to where I have just the basic style and redefine it from there then with this particular box um, we could define that as an object style if we really want to I'm not going to worry about it right now because in this tutorial we have really done a lot to change the way our design looks one of the last things that you might want to do is go to the view menu display performance and take it to high quality display and you should see a little bit better display than um, we had before but this is a much more exciting um, opening page the only thing that we might want to do is lay out our text so it is a little bit more um, interesting layout I was putting the symbols right there in the middle of that line and the secret life of um, split on the center line of that Fibonacci sequence and you could even make the text a little bit larger maybe smaller depending upon what you need your needs are I'm not gonna worry about that just because those are cosmetic versus functional and uh, we're gonna go on with the next tutorial where we add a little bit more graphics over to the right hand side